it has never been a question how statecraft is above those that liberated us. It has never been brought to question with any much thought being given to it. It has never been a question for those that understand the intricacies of statecraft. It is the gorillas that have turned to eat their children. Now the real problem is the gorilla does not know how to stay relevant, how to safeguard the principles of the liberation struggle. And that is the real story. The real story points back at education, ideological empowerment, ideological empowerment that makes them understand that continuity is nothing more than yourself living through your children, dying in their bones, living through their flesh. Now, the Robert Mugabe regime did a lot for education. And by that we say education in the form of literacy. What type of literacy are we talking about? We are talking about literacy, linguistic literacy. We're talking about the ability to read, to, to read and write at least in English. And we see him building a lot of hospitals and colleges. And he did so very well in that. However, content creation was not his job. These men and women gave us a political victory. The economic one had to start with an educational redress. One that was to say, let us now tailor make our story. Let us now tell our story. Before the party was in any need of salvaging, when the party was the party. And at this time, it is when maybe a Robert Mugabe who tried to educate or even to get literate most of the Zandla and uh, Zipra uh, cadres, but we, we, we do not know what was on his mind. However, a lot more could have been done in setting up structures that actually benefit black people, the indigenous people an educational redress, an educational reform that was going to speak to the masses and make them understand that we could celebrate our own heroes, we could tell our own stories, one that would fill in the gap. So much humiliation our people suffered, and that gap is lacking. Today we are knee-high in British history, and every other type of history. While children as young as 12 years are learning robotics, STEM education in its highest index. And uh, as of three weeks ago, a man went to the edge of space, commercial flights to the space. The space race has begun again, finding a new home after the going green. The question has always been, what is Africa doing? Africa is busy having elections with gorillas. Africa is busy having elections with gorillas. Africa is busy persecuting the likes of Makomborero Haruziweishe, a young intellect student leader who refused to live in a world without liberty, who refused to not have answers to the questions that his literacy had brought him to a position to then assess and evaluate. He did not understand why he should suffer when he had an educational degree. Locked up is Makomborero Haruziweishe today because of the misunderstandings between gorillas and the civilians. Now, the separation of the two is simply made to illustrate a point that says those that liberated us could not surely have done so solely to be in the upper echelons of, of, of society and to squander and be corrupt. The other logic would come and say that they, they, they do this because they know no better. Mindless politicking has become what it is today. We are all patriotic citizens. We are all um, ones that find um, so much pride in, in being associated with our country in, in particular. 
as it has a rich pride even in the African um, in the African context. However, this has caused so much dismay, even a psychological heartbreak to those that are born free, as they said, but they are not born free really, they are born poor, poor of opportunity, poor of freedom of, 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 of association, poor that democracy is being dangled in front of them. Liberation, hero status, has become an, a, a, a gateway to a life of opulence and, and, and abuse. And, 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 and how could we blame them as well? What could they do? They see as that they are losing relevance. The only people they could trust were themselves. So they took up positions within statecraft, but statecraft is beyond them. However, I think by around 1990, there should have been a realization that says we have been, we have assimilated, we have consolidated power in the sovereign state. Let us start rebuilding our country. Let us start on the journey to rebuild our country. We did not need to wait till 1999 when uh, the ZCTU, led by Morgan Shangirai and many others uh, from that, uh, and the un university students, uh, Judah E. Jongwe, and uh, many others, and uh, who, 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 um, the Tondera Indiras, and, and, and everybody around that era were fighting for the space of what um, the movement for democratic um, change was at that time and was morphing into. This is a shame today to say that we have jailed conscience. We have jailed the truth. We have jailed those that we fought for. As a country, we are jailing our own children by us misunderstanding them. We are not looking at it and understanding that as much as you call us or call them born freeze. They are born poor. Disadvantaged by their bloodlines. Their fathers did not go to war. They never got, even if they did, very few of them got into, into the political circles that were accepted um, via tribal lines. And this has seen a tremendous strain on people as they would say, if only my father was this, if only, what type of a society is that? When you see that in order, to produce, you have to ask for permission from men who produce nothing. When you see that favors flow, not to those that deal in goods and services, but to those that deal and move with underhanded agendas under the tables, know that your society is doomed. I paraphrase a couple of sentiments shared by a writer about statecraft and, 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 and its designs and when you realize it. It is time that we find some healing and we start listening to each other. We, the young people of the continent, the young people of Zimbabwe, we say that educational redress is the only solution. We are not supposed to kill each other. Black people have no business killing each other. Black people do not have a history of killing each other. Let us not find ourselves there. Let us not find ourselves there in the uh, description that P.W. Botha gave to Parliament. Give them guns, they kill each other. Just because a hedgehog looks like a porcupine does not mean... A porcupine looks like a hedgehog does not mean it's a hedgehog. All they know is to dance and to, to have many wives. This is the description. I got mad the first time I read it. But with the jailing of conscience... Our conscience, our, 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 what has happened to us? Killing our own, attacking our own because of misunderstandings, blaming the gaps that we have left open and then say that we are supposed to have one holistic understanding. On paper, the liberation movement, including Zanla into ZANU-PF, is an amazing document and and. and and its deliberations and its standpoints from scientific socialism and uh, 
as they balanced off during the Mugabe administration even into a semi capitalistic state um, because of the agro base but but still the principles of the war had to remain the ideology that had sustained a guerrilla warfare had to remain at least in honor of the civilians that lost their lives Fearing guns, fearing supplies, running away under question by the Salu scouts. How dare we kill our own? We have no business killing each other. We have no business misunderstanding each other. We have no business doing that. Educational reforms are the most. We have to go back to the basics. If we are modeling ourselves with China. If we say China is our friend, China must give us a model of how it did it. If we do not have a cultural tag that is attached to us and one that we hold firm, we cannot sell any Zimbabwe. We do not even have a national dress, a distinct one at least, until the, the first lady had to introduce one. However, this is part of the societal problems where we have children who are not learning the stories from our perspective, children who are not going to be told that we are propping you up to, be, to continue our legacy, children that we are looking and, and, and their adaptation to technology and seeing them as enemies. I am pained as I speak here today, as I record this podcast, to my utter disgust, I speak to an audience that I cannot see, to my utter disgust, I cry, but tears fail me to my utter disgust. I speak to an infected and affected audience via virus, via systemic ignorance, via abuse, by those that liberated us, and vis-a-vis. The trauma of technology has also traumatized the gorillas. And Africa, in this state, can only be described as elections with gorillas. Now, elections with gorillas are not going to give us service provision. Elections with those that are trying to hold on to the freedom that they understand is not going to to help us. The cultural positions as well say that correction from bottom up is rebellion. Hence, our approach should be one that says, let us relearn to be Zimbabwean. Let us relearn to be who we are. Let us stop a situation of guns and roses. Let us stop fighting each other and stop understanding and start building. Now, whatever we talk about economic resuscitation has to start with ideological phase. The education of our youths on our history and our positions so that they would feel safe and secure to live this wonderful country in the hands of the youth. Makombora Aruzieshe, this is Patson Mashingaize, Comrade Patson Mashingaize. I salute you, my young brother. And... I am sad that you are caught up in this quagmire that we have faced as an African nation. However, it is all but part of history. But we salute your resolve. We salute how I know you have always been concentrated on the ideals of democracy. And Makomborero represents nations upon nations of young people disenfranchised because of a time they did not participate not because of cowardice, but because they were not there. Let our elders learn to articulate and to talk. Let us not use violence and kill our own. There is nothing treasonous. Not that I fear treason. There is nothing treasonous about talking about our educational reform. I love all Zimbabweans. I love all Africans. Let us go back and teach each other the show our children our stories. Let us celebrate our own heroes. Let us name our own criminals. Let us name our streets in our names. Let us find an intrinsic value that spills out of us so much so that an economic tag is 
inevitable. I say this to my utter disgust. I leave not knowing that you have truly heard me. To my utter disgust, Makumbura Arizueshi is still incarcerated in millions more all over the world. Let us not imprison the truth. Let us not imprison our continuity. We are all in this thing together. I thank you.